alright uh, this is a very serious subject just uh, as some of the western countries took slaves from the mostly African countries and a lot of white Christians stood up against what was happening and protested and demonstrated on the streets um, over 100, 150 years ago in the 18th century, 19th century. Um, but what we see is what's defined as reverse racism, which uh, I wouldn't define it as that. Reverse racism to me is hating your own race. Uh, racism is simply hating someone of a different race. So you can be black and be racist. You can be white and be racist. You can be yellow or green or whatever color you want and, and be a racist. And so the definition of reverse racism is no such thing. Well, it's, it's mystified. Um, reverse racism is if you hate your own race. If a black hate a black, if a white hate, hates a white, Yellow hates yellow, red hates red, and so on. Um, the white Christian male seems to be the most uh, hated um, entity in this world at the moment. Um, why is that? I believe I'll tell you the root cause of racism. A lot of wickedness went on during the slave trade, and there's no excuse for it. Um, there's no excuse for it. It was mishandled. Um, you know, it was abused and, and it was um, absolutely um, a horrible thing which happened to both whites uh, in Europe were actually uh, in the slave trade and, and the blacks from Africa, mostly Africa, were in the slave trade. And then there's the whole caste system in India where, you know, the, the, the lowest of the low class in, in India are still being exploited by their own race. Again, there's nothing about that in the news. Nothing about that in the news. Even when you go to India, there's nothing about that. Uh, and, and these Indians are being exploited by other Indians. Um, again, nothing mentioned about that. That's, that's, you could call that reverse racism, but that's a class system, or in their case, it's a caste system, which is sort of like Dar Darwinianism, you know, evolution. You know, you evolve to you know, in the, the Hindu religion, a sort of a princely god, <laughs> you know, garbage. Um, yeah, we're all human beings, or in fact, more to the statement, we're all created in the image of God. The root cause of ra racism is Satanism. Um, what it is, I, I would say that there's been a lot of murders, and um, the murder rate in South Africa is absolutely something like, uh, I don't know, 100 times more than your local neighborhood, but we'll look at that in a second. Um, and this has never been done in living memory um, since, you know, the Nazis tried to wipe out the Jews um, in Central Europe. Um, a lot of these Jews were Sephardic, not all of them. Um, they were actually Ashkenazi Jews on both sides, on, on Hitler's side and um, in the death camps. Um, I don't believe that, you know, the story about Adolf Hitler and the Nazis was um, completely racist either. I believe it was uh, Satanists who were in control of that, who just wanted to basically rape and murder and steal people's property. And I believe it's exactly the same thing that is going on in uh, South Africa just now. Uh, there are Satanists within the government who want to get rich off of murdering and plundering uh, the, the homes of what we might term the Boers, which are mostly Dutch settlers. And um, I myself, being British, I know that there was the Boer Wars back uh, over a hundred years ago. Um, very political, um, all about just... Um, having the privilege of working in South Africa, you know, when these settlers came down there um, from Holland, um, mostly from Holland, they really grafted and um, opened a lot of mines, um, 
yeah, there might, must have been a lot of injustices. We're going to hear a South African woman speaking about what happened to her recently, which I think is a very good interview. Um, we'll just play that just now. Hanging in the couch, and then the previous night there was a lady, and she said, I remember you from the rape case of your daughter 10 years ago, because my daughter is raped. And, um... So this is her speaking about the fact that her husband was beaten to death um, by a few men who came around, obviously racists, um, black South Africans. Um, obviously, Satan is trying to instigate a race war. You know, uh, racism is the gasoline, but Satanism is the spark, if you know what I'm saying. And I do think that uh, the higher echelons of this movement in South Africa are Satanists. I've no doubt in my mind about that. I've actually prayed about it. I made a video about this before and the Lord has, has gotten me to make this video now. Yeah, I know you. Yeah, hi, Sarah, how are you? It's like the stairs are all, we are all in shock. And she walked with me through the house and she said, oh, that's nice. What's that? I said, that's a wine cooler. I want it once. And uh, if you can pay, she said, are you leaving? So yeah, I'm leaving. Yeah, you give it to me. Sure. I thought, yeah. and then I said to her, you know what, you, <laughs> out of my house. But she did, and said, ah, ich, Mrs. I'm sorry. Fuck it. Big fuck it. In your heart, how do you feel about South Africa now? I want to burn it down completely. Not with my friends, but with anyone else in it. And then I want to like close it, weld it closed, and then I want to shit on it. Now as you can see here, there's some disturbing images, but this is the murder rate at the moment. Um, in the international world, South African citizens, South African police officers, and South African white farmers. Your local neighborhood might be somewhere between 6 per 100,000 and maybe 30 if you're living in quite a, a a violent type of city situation in Europe or America. Uh, South African citizens is way up above that. Police officers is very high and if you're a farmer this is the murder rate, it's about 200 per 100,000 and I think it's about 60,000 um, farmers who've lost their lives about the past uh, 10 or so years since the apartheid was uh, dropped which um, is really disturbing being a white African uh, South African farmer is the most dangerous job in the world um, it's a race war the liberals and the ANC regime are denying so maybe a lot of these uh, South African black citizens didn't get jobs when the whites were in power. Some of them may have been beaten um, for certain things. I'm not sure there's a lot of, obviously a lot of bad things went on in the past. So is it an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth? Well, you decide, you decide. Um, these are white um, men, male, female farmers, mostly of an old age, who have been raped and tortured for days on end by um, black South Africans. Some of them are still alive, beaten, raped and tortured. Now what actually happened when um, Nelson Mandela was in power was that he actually targeted black and white Christians. Black and white Christians. Okay. Um, in this case uh, I believe these pictures are to do with uh, other foreign nationals coming to South Africa. 
and South Africans retaliating to these foreign nationals, either they're black or white, okay, and they're trying to get work in South Africa. And so the mostly the black South Africans are attacking um, the white farmers and they're attacking other nationalities who are coming into South Africa um, looking for work. Brutal killings, torture, um, very inhumane. I mean, this is like, um, th this is on a scale, like e even the death camps in Nazi Germany were horrific, but this is just simply uh, um, groups, groups of black males um, going around South Africa, um, just murdering and torturing and raping and pillaging continuously without really hardly anything being done and that's just the truth of it a lot of people you know they don't like speaking about this because maybe it's not in the mainstream news maybe they don't see it on their mainstream news so they'll say well let's not just talk about it but these people are being tortured murdered Rape, no matter what age they are, they could be of a young age, they could be of an old age. But this is what's happening in South Africa at the moment. And there's no outcry from the international community. There's no outcry from black Christians or white Christians or anyone. South Africa are just meant to get on with it. South African police officers dying at a very high rate actually being murdered and targeted. Perhaps uh, white South African police officers. And so whatever racism you're suffering in your country, maybe you, you, you missed out getting a job. Um, you're a white person working in, in India. You're a white person working in Africa. You're a black man working in Europe or America. Maybe you didn't get a job or something and you're griping about it and moaning. Well, um, this is beyond racism. This, this is blood curdling, skin uh, curdling racism. And there's only once or twice I've met some real racist people in my life. I mean, I know some what you what you might think are racists from your community and you think that they're racist and stuff. But when you meet these people from South Africa, and I've met one or two, I met one when I was in Israel, and my story was I was sleeping outside in Nazareth, um, the place that I was meant to stay called me about half an hour before I came to the hostel and said that they had double booked and so I couldn't stay there anymore, which you might say is racist, right? So I had to find a place at short notice to stay, which I couldn't actually find anywhere. And I ended up in the Arab Quarter. And uh, I was advised not to go there. I ended up there. And they were looking at me funny. Where are you from? I explained. We had, we had a laugh. We had a joke about certain things. And uh, ended up, they offered me a place to stay, but it was t more than I could afford. And so what I ended up doing was uh, sleeping outside. Um, I found this park, uh, slept near this park, and then uh, I prayed about it. And the Holy Spirit <clears throat> just told me to walk to a bus stop about 4 a.m. And within about two minutes, this bus came and it was going to Haifa. And I went straight to Haifa. I was walking in Haifa, I arrived there maybe half 5 a.m., something like that. I was walking the streets of Haifa. And the Holy Spirit led me right to uh, a lovely little hostel where I met uh, an African-American woman who said that uh, her grandfather was a white British man who raped uh, this uh, black slave but she showed me kindness. Uh, I remember got a place to stay, got 
guy Shally, and I was in there sleeping, and I remember it was quite late at night, and I woke up, and the room was freezing. And I'd noticed that I had a new roommate from South Africa. It was a black South African. And so I woke up, you know, I tried to pull the covers up and uh, I see that he had the air conditioning on, he had the temperature right down as far as it would go. And I'd slept outside the previous night and I was I was shivering, I was very cold. Because it was like winter time in, in Israel, in, Israel um, in Nazareth, it's not exactly very warm. And I just got up and asked him, uh, is there any chance you could turn the air conditioning off? And uh, he pretended not to listen, he, he pretended he couldn't hear me, he said, excuse me, uh, it's very cold in this room, would you mind just either turning the temperature up or, and he just kept on blanking me, eventually he answered me, um, what, what do you mean, and that's all he did, he didn't acknowledge what I was asking him, what I was saying, and so I, I had to basically uh, get a new room the next day, I had to look for a new room. <clears throat> so then when my uh, African-American friend found out and did a bit of talking and to see what happened and he said there was a bit of misunderstanding about it you know it was just maybe maybe a cultural clash maybe he thought that me being white I would um, I would like it the, the room being cold that was the reply I got you know maybe I'd actually like the room being actually you know, cold because I'm from Europe, so that may maybe he thought that I would like that, even though I, I was telling him uh, to turn the temperature up. And so anyway, ended up finding another place to stay. Similar incident happened when I visited, uh, I've stayed in West Africa, I've stayed in East Africa. No problems until this South African a black man came to this uh, church one day and I'm not sure which tribe he was from, I think the, the Zulus, I'm not sure exactly. And I know the British had a lot of run-ins with a lot of different tribes, I, I understand that. Well, it was there that movie, The Zulu, isn't there, and, and, and it was just a British, they, they massacred all the British soldiers. But um, yeah, what happened was he spotted me and a white man in this black church and he actually called me to the front and so what he did instead of whatever it was he was talking about uh, some some biblical thing what he did was he decided to get down on his hands and knees and start barking like a dog that's what happened started barking like a dog which uh, I was rather surprised at his behavior um, and he started speaking words in his native language and I just looked around and I could see that the rest of the congregation were quite uneasy about what he was doing and I believe this was a, a demonic racist spirit which was manifesting in this man. Now in the past when demons have manifest um, I have been able to rebuke them, I've rebuked them and so on. But I actually felt that this this particular demon that I was experiencing, that was actually manifesting in front of my eyes, in front of the congregation, and this was meant to be a, pa a pastor of, of the Bible, a pastor of the Word of God. Um, I just kind of looked at him and I thought, really, there's nothing I can do in this situation. Nothing I can do. And so all, all I did was, I walked out of that church. I looked around at the faces. I saw that basically people were a bit surprised and in shock about what they were seeing. And uh, I just decided to walk out that church. And I never went back to that church, even though I spoke to the pastor, even though the pastor, he was a fairly nice man. I chatted to him before. I know I knew some of the congregation there. But I decided it wasn't for me. And that was my experience of racism um, in Africa. Um, I wasn't attacked 
there's other certain things that happened. One of the times, one of my friends who I was doing ministry with, we went round schools preaching the word of God, teaching the Bible. And on one occasion, we were in the city, and um, my ministry partner, who who was black, he ended up jumping uh, into the bushes while I was walking along, and uh, basically, uh, he wouldn't tell me why he did it. Um, he he sort of came back within within a few ten seconds. He came back, and uh, you know. And I was like, uh, it, was, it wasn't until maybe a few weeks later that he told me what happened. He said that um, he, he saw someone, he thought he may have been an army or someone like that, that was actually pointing a gun at my direction, or at my specific direction, which I had no view that, uh, of this. And um, so that's, that's why he dived out the way in case he would get shot, but he didn't actually tell me um, why he was doing it exactly. That's uh, that's probably one of the best friends I've ever had in, in ministry. <laughs> probably one of the best friends I've ever had in ministry. So, anyhow. Let's see some more statistics here. I mean, there's a very similar thing that happened in Zimbabwe. Remember, uh, they blamed white farmers for their, what was it, high inflation, they were saying, or something was wrong with whatever. So they blamed the whites, just like the Jews blamed, uh, sorry, the the um, Nazis, as it were, blamed the Jews in Germany. And so the blacks blamed the whites. I suppose in America, whites blamed the blacks. It's racism. It's a race, race, racism is going on all over the world. But what you got to understand is, it's not because of any specific race that a nation isn't doing well. It's because of the political situation. It's because there's a lack of free trade. It's because um, there is big corporations that's trying to run things in the world rather than letting the small businessman like these, even these white farmers. I'm certain they'd be doing a wonderful job in South Africa and I can't see any reason that um, white farmers should be targeted other than they are, they are landowners um, maybe some of the I have a friend who married a South African girl and he said in some occasion like for example he was a painter and so um, they used to work together blacks and whites uh, the business owner was a white man and so, for example, if the sun was out on one side of the house, he would tell the, the, the black man to go and paint that side, um, and he would paint the other side, because, you know, they, they want to protect themselves from, from the sun. And I understand that goes on, and that's, that's not right. I understand it's, uh, it seems logical, but at the same time, it's, it's not really good, is it? Um, you know, it's still undermining people, even though they're getting paid, even though they're able to feed their families. I don't know the situation of of these black tribes before these Europeans came to South Africa, but clearly they feel as if like, their way of life um, was, well, it may, it may have been uprooted, just like uh, the the Indians in in, in North America, perhaps and they feel very aggrieved about what's happened. Um, maybe maybe they've, I don't know all the, the details and situation, but I would guess, I'm just guessing at the moment, I'm using my logic, but if you're getting a lot of white landowners and perhaps a, a tribe uh, used to camp out there, you know, in generations past, and so that's, that's one reason I could think of that um, certain tribes would be angry because Okay, they used to have families here. They used to build their little houses there, and now that you get these landowners telling them they, they, you know they can't go on the land. Maybe like the Aborigines in Australia, I, I know about that, and so I can empathise with that with that side of things. Believe me, it's happened in Britain as well. 
It's happened all over the world. You know, other nations have came in. The English came into Scotland, and um, that's why a lot of Scottish people had to find other land because their farms and their land was taken by English people, and then Scots had to move on to America or they had to move on to Australia because um, their land was taken. It's not as if it's just a lust for power and land. It's because there's always a struggle in this world living a living a normal life not really power and position living a normal life um i think all of us deserve to to have some land to stay on grow our own food i think that's uh, a right a human right that that we all should try and defend you know and we should try and empathize with each other rather than just causing race wars just saying well it's because they're white that they're evil or it's because they're black that they're evil or whatever color that's racism, it's, it's emptiness, it's stupidness. There, there's no logic in it, there's no um, empathy, there's no edification. Um, a lot of these people do not do not come from Christian backgrounds. A lot of them are akin to biblical cultures and some of them might feel as if their cultures have been messed with by other cultures coming in. Believe me, all of us in the entire world have had the same experiences happen to us. The answer is not to go and murder people. That is not the answer. And not just murder them. I, I, I believe something in this scale, you know, you hear about murder, you hear about that, that you know, an eye for an eye. But this is beyond, this is way beyond that. This is torture. This is prolonged stuff that you get gangs staying in these farms for days and days and days raping children women um, men are, are made to watch and then they're tortured and killed in very 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 brutal ways and I, I don't think there's been a race epidemic like this perhaps in history perhaps this is the the new levels of racism, and we don't like talking about it, but it's there, it's been there for the past at least 10 years. At least 10 years it's been here. We don't like talking about it, but it's there. And it's about time we really pray for South Africa, we really start to pray against the spirit of racism. This is what the spirit of racism does. It's a very brutal, psychopathic spirit um, which does not deal in logic, which does not deal in love, which does not deal according to even the word of God. Even the word, you know, an eye for an eye. This is beyond an eye for an eye. This is absolutely horrific. And um, I think more people should speak about it. And certainly we should pray uh, for your area, for South Africa, um, for a lot of these demons races demons to be uh, cast out of certain individuals that's all I can really say about it <clears throat> let her continue I hope you understand what I feel inside totally. and what do you think um, needs to change in order for this crime to stop I, I don't know where the hatred is coming from I don't know because I understand the apartheid time, but we also made a documentary about apartheid. But in that time, the people who were working on the farms, they had medical, they had a house, they maybe not a beautiful house and not maybe a beautiful car, but they had had food, they had their kids who could go to school, they had their medicals, or maybe their their boss took them if they were ill to the doctor. And now, all of a sudden, everyone thinks that all those bull or all those white dudes are like wrong and they have to be killed. Yeah, she, she's right in what she's saying. They don't even care. I mean, the British, uh, I'm sorry to say, I mean, the British did fight against the Boers as well. and uh, But now it's just sheer racism. They do not care about what area of Europe or wherever they come from. They, they just want to kill white people. That's what it's a spirit of racism but at the heart of it is Satanism and 
you know, if this continues, it's just going to turn into another Zimbabwe, you know, because the leader of Zimbabwe threw out um, a lot of the uh, so-called white farmers, at least he threw them out, and then go ahead and murder them, you know, they were told to leave. And uh, we know that Zimbabwe is uh, in a terrible state just now, financially. Um, so, economically, if you want to talk about that. Now, if these South Africans have a better plan to live without money, maybe they just uh, want to, they don't want to live with money, they don't want to live under the system. All right, I, I can understand that. I can understand that. Why not do it politically? Because they have the power to just say, look, uh, sorry, like we're in control now. And uh, this is this is how it's going to be. Uh, we're not going to use money anymore. We're not going to trade with other nations anymore. But they're just not doing that. They have no plan for their nation. All they're doing is uh, murdering, raping, torturing. And this is what's going to happen. If there's no farms and no farmers, no matter what colour they are, um, the land is going to go basically to nothing. It's going to turn into a desert. And then they'll just blame white people for that again. This is a satanic spirit um, that's uh, been poured out in South Africa through the witch doctors who are not Christians. Um, Why? How can you say that? Where, where, where is this coming from? How bad? How bad, bad can you? How bad can you be? Look at the rent. When I came here the first time, I came here the first time in 1989. My dad bought me a Kruger and they also took with. I hope they will burn in hell with that. Um, the, the, the rent was like the same what the euro is now. Where, this, this country is going down so badly. You know, maybe this is what's going to happen to South Africa if they do throw out these people. They're educated people. Um, they want to go ahead and take that land and build farms themselves but that does not seem to be their intention it just seems to be they're coveting someone's possessions and um, at the moment it's it's expressing itself something terrible in South Africa the rate of rape and murder and what have you is just phenomenal you know I saw some of those papers that you had in your hand and it said elderly couple shot whatever and I couldn't help but think to myself that's that's not a good example you know with all due respect the good examples are the elderly couple that had boiling water poured over them, or the elderly gentleman who recently got locked up in his in his Ford truck and trussed up, and then the, the truck set on fire and burned to death, or the little girl who was raped, the, the, the four-year-old girl who was raped by three men, survived it. And because she survived, you know, this was proven in the post-mortem autopsy, uh, she was then bundled up in newspaper with gasoline poured over it and then set on fire, or the girl who was crucified on her parents' kitchen table and then raped a three-year-old girl in this instance. Okay, so, uh, crucifixion. Um, this is a sadistic, obviously, uh, spirit that's in these people, but also it's a satanic spirit which is mocking the death of Jesus Christ. That's what Satanists do, and that's why I think uh, that Probably the majority of these people who are doing these attacks are Satanists and I'll, I'll show you a vision that I had of the God that they worship as well. The, the three-year-old girl raped by four men while crucified to her parents' kitchen table after her father had had his, his throat slit and her mother had been killed as well. You know, it is beyond people's imagination what we're in at the moment. First, he's about British history in Africa. So I didn't know the British uh, Cape Colony. That small colonies here. Probably gold trading and the usual stuff, diamond.
Let's see what happens after the First World War. Should I say the Second World War? It pretty much uh, fades off after the Second World War. Its power and influence in Africa. This guy says now do one on African colonies in Britain. <laughs> That's true. Very, very true. A few, a few replies that you know are not too. Uh, how would you say complimentary to the land that these people live in? So they're they're just claiming Britain for themselves. Uh, that was the last one, I think, about nineteen eighty. Well, appear it must have just been for a few years. It was very fast. It was about right about here. I'm not sure what country it was. Rhodesia. South Rhodesia was the last one. Here's a documentary. This uh, witch doctor has been on several documentaries about South Africa. Uh, he's a Zulu witch doctor. You see, he's got a skull there, a shrunken skull and bones around his neck, uh, which is all right. It probably it could have been a white man. It could have been maybe a white baby or something like that. They raped it and killed it, made a necklace of it. So that's all acceptable, of course. He's not a racist, but the point is, it's, it's not, the spirit of racism, as I say, is the um, the fuel, as it were. But unless you have a, a, a spark to light it. Um, then it's, it's really passive passive racism yes it can be annoying you know yes it can be um, bad you know to live in that environment but when you have satanism mixed in with it like this guy has um, you know he worships devils and conjures up demons and so on probably I've seen this guy or somebody very like him and um, there's a video about it which I've, I've watched a, a year or two ago I remember and it was about shape-shifting reptilians uh, and it's believed that once these guys get to a certain level they're able to shape-shift into crocodiles or snakes or whatever so uh, that's the the history of witchcraft which is um, very dark um, very wicked and uh, there you go. This is the war we're, we're staying in just now. It's um, extremely satanic. Uh, you wouldn't get a bunch of Christians um, showing that spirit of racism in the first place. And if, if there was a spirit of race, racism, it would be contained. But again, uh, it's satanism that's a real problem. Of South Africa to this man. This man, politically, was a communist politically was a communist, spiritually um, he was involved in the, the Jesuits, that is a it's known as a Templar cross uh, this um, but th this this is this is Jesuitical um, he's a knight of Malta he was a knight of Malta so he was involved, that was his spirituality um, and we know that in the Catholic Church there's idols and there's all types of things that go on within the Catholic Church. That's he's used this cross, this particular cross. Um, some people refer to it as a Knights Templar cross. So you see these, uh, they're all satanic organizations, very high level satanic organizations who were involved in Nazism during the Second World War. It's the same people who are involved in this uh, South African Holocaust, which they are going to try and provoke into probably just about every nation. It's very strange as well that we have the Mandela effect. Um, people who understand what that is. Um, well, I think his prison number was, this was his prison number here. Um, 4664 I think it was, triple six. Um, 
Anyhow. Nelson Mandela was a communist. Uh, this is very much what he believed. Um, well, if he really believes that, you know, nations are for the native peoples, uh, then what does the whole world have to become communist to, to end up killing its uh, visiting populations from different countries? Is this is this obviously what, what they want? They just want mass slaughters everywhere, religious wars everywhere in every nation. And, uh, you know, for the people of South Africa, they're definitely in the tribulation. They're definitely in the tribulation. I believe we are. Not in the last three and a half years, but we're definitely in it now, I, I would say. Um, this woman knew what she was talking about. Yeah, I mean, I, I agree that she shut a lot of industry down in Scotland. I, I, I could see that. I could see the damage she caused to my country, and yet... Um, she did stand by a lot of, um, well, her, her basic outlook was, was capitalist, so so you got to give her some credit for, for the things she said, um, but again, my, you know, my country suffered a lot through, through the hands of this woman. Uh, maybe turn my country into a socialist, communist uh, Whatever it is just now, not it's not quite a dictatorship, but it's definitely uh, the the rule of the elite over um, justice and freedom within my country. A little bit about the Mandela effect here. Um, there has there was articles about his death in 1991. Um, I believe that there was news reports of his death. But then, you know, while he died in prison, but then he got out. I mean, he could have had a double, you know. It's very possible as well. Um, he could have had a, a, a double or whatever. But uh, for those of you that don't know about the Mandela effect, just type it into a search engine and you can see the differences. Um, just some huge ones, really, that people still still really haven't caught up on uh, you know the world the, the world's media really hasn't really caught up on the Mandela effect and the things have changed you know I've heard quiz questions very much uh, speaking about you know the TV cinema and the fact that things have changed since a lot of these movies have came out the Mandela effect is real you know it is a monopoly man it's just so many of them just literally hundreds of them. I think there's probably even more than that. But there's some very, very obvious ones. Very, very obvious ones. Again, why it's called the Mandela Effect, I'm not sure. It was some type of occultist, apparently, that named the the actual phenomenon. Which, which uh, well, I don't know. Ultimately, God is the one who's in control of the universe. So... Uh, but we know that the Antichrist is going to come and take power. And he's referred to as the man of perdition. And so, compared to the things that happen in the Bible, you know, you're talking about a third of the earth being destroyed, um, a lot of the oceans dying and being destroyed, um, animals being depleted, birds falling out the sky, etc., etc., etc. And and you say, why would God allow this? Well, I think it's to teach us a lesson that um, how brutal and how wicked and how bad things can be um, without God in our lives, without Jesus Christ in our lives. Um, I think, you know, God is allowing this to happen. That's, that's the only explanation. The Bible does tend to teach that as well. He's going to allow Satan quite a lot of power towards the end. And he's going to cause mass massive destruction and changes and all types of things which is of course happening right now this is a friend on Facebook who uh, was homeless in London accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as his saviour had uh, some African Christian people who uh, baptised him but then he was attacked 
by the some bodyguards would you believe the church has bodyguards but there we go and uh, he was thrown out of that church and since I think he's been uh, rebuking the pastor for drinking alcohol and different things it just seems to, to me that um, black people seem to think that everything is about money and position to them it's like the reason why Jesus came was just to give us money and position you know is it only through born again Christianity can you come to a a degree of understanding uh, and a degree of forgiveness you might say I don't believe the word forgiveness exists in other cultures and other religions in the world I don't believe it does exist and I believe only through the Christian gospel can men and women and races and peoples live together and beside one another for the glory of God knowing that we've been created by God in God's image and that God commands us to respect that no matter what color or kindred we're from it's about time we realize there is a struggle for a long long time on this earth people have struggled you know to um, keep their lands to stay in their lands and socialism and communism is such a, a horrific beast as we saw in Russia um, and it's just happening again you know you, you, you do know that um, Nelson Mandela was a communist you know he was he was horrific a communist dictator really that's what he he was handed power by the white South Africans handed power okay you want to do it your way and then he raises his right hand in a fist and he says yes I'll do it my way and here he is he's actually did, did you know he was uh, high up in the Catholic Church did you actually understand that you, do you understand where all, most of the problems or all the problems come from in the world it's not through races it's through the, the, the harlot it's through the, the, the Roman Catholic Church that are causing all these divisions and wars because they want to keep power they want to hold on to power they want to hold on to power the Catholic Church um, he's a knight of Malta by the way Nelson Mandela the Knight of Malta and this cross here um, was also used by the, the Nazis in, in the Second World War okay it was just basically a satanic cross which if you it's a pyramid, that's that's basically what it is it's a pyramid that's actually spread out if, if you pretend that that's paper and that's the top of the pyramid and you just put it together so now that's what it is and it also the Knights Templar use, use that symbol as well it's all governed from the Vatican all governed from the Vatican I'm not sure where this picture comes from but it was very much like a vision that I had about uh, South Africans and uh, their agriculture agricultural gods you might say that um, they, they, they worship in paganism or witchcraft and so on um, so anyhow um, let's pray for South Africa let's pray that, that they can sort things out without any more bloodshed Amen